Today I'm going to look at the installation of a decoder in a 00HO loco. I've got my loco chassis here, I've taken out the blanking plug for the 8 pin and I'm going to install a length standard decoder with an 8 pin socket. Pin 1 on this is the one connected to the orange wire and pin 1 is marked on this chassis with a star, sometimes it's marked with a 1. So the decoder just plugs in and we'll attach the decoder so that it doesn't um, short out against anything. So there is a sticky pad in the pack provided for this. I've now placed the loco on the programming track. Um, it comes out of the PQ outputs of the Lentz LZV100 over there. And I'm using the Lentz LH100 for programming. Okay, so we want to check the installation, so we'll go to press F until you get prog up for programming. Enter, enter again to confirm. And scroll around to CV, so it's plus and minus until you get CV on the screen. Press enter. And I'm going to look at CV30 on a Lens standard decoder. And just press enter to read it. If you get any value other than zero, then you've got a short circuit somewhere within the loco. So this is a nice CV just to check and it gives the error readings for the decoder. Press escape, I'm going to look at CV1, which is the two digit address of the loco. I'll read it, we'll come up with a standard which is 3. I'm going to change that, press clear, change it to 10. We've programmed that in. Escape there. There's a couple of checks performed, I've now put it on the main track, I'm happy with the installation. And I can then drive it on dress 10. So this is just on factory standard settings and you get a reasonable speed curve with that. do now is just look at some of the other CVs that can be programmed to modify the behavior of the loco. So go back into the programming on the programming track. If I look at CV2, what I'll do, I'll read that. That's actually set on a very low value and it's not a problem with this loco. Um, what you can find is some locos um, CV2 sends the minimum power on the first speed step. Sometimes this power is too low and you may need to increase the value so that the motor turns over smoothly. Um, best thing just to have a look at the loco and see how it's running. If it's not pulling away on speed step 1 smoothly, then just increase this value incrementally. So try it on value 2, say, and then 3, then 4, until the loco runs smoothly on first speed step going to clarify what I mean by the running smoothly on the first speed step. So I've selected my loco and I put on speed step 1. If the loco is staggering and stalling on that then increase CV2 to increase the power to the motor to start it. So that's just speed step 1. This loco actually is running quite well on that. Now looking at CV3, so we'll go into that. CV3 is the acceleration delay or the inertia on acceleration. I'll just read that. The factory setting there is 6. Um, if I take it all the way down to 1, there's no real inertia on the loco. So with low inertia settings, you'll find that the loco accelerates away very briskly. 
by putting a high value into uh, CV3. The range is up to 255, but what I'm going to do is put in a value of, say, 60. inertia value in CV3, as I accelerate, the loco will be responding quite slowly to that acceleration. It gives the loco a little bit more realistic inertia on acceleration. It will gradually get up to the, the speed step that you've specified. On. CV4 um, handles the braking inertia of the loco, so the factory setting is usually quite low, so we're on 5 there. If I clear that and put in a quite high braking inertia, say 25, we'll see the results when I put it back on the track. Set the loco with high inertia, um, what you'll find, I'll get it up to speed and then brake it, and you'll find that it uh, is quite slow to break down, so we'll Get it going, and then put the braking on, and you see it will coast gently to a halt. It's very realistic, but you've got to be careful on shorter, smaller layouts that you don't just slam into the buffers. CV5 is maximum speed. Um, this is the maximum amount of power that the decoder will allow the motor to have. So if we read it, you'll find that it's been set at basically maximum 254. Um, if we go in and reduce it, so I'm going to clear it, put it down to say 50, and then we'll see the result on the track. So I've set the maximum speed down to a, a lower level, so we'll, we'll wipe it up to maximum speed. And you find that the loco is now cruising at its maximum speed, which is quite low. I've now reset the maximum speed to the highest value that the decoder will allow, and I'm going to rapidly run out of track when I do this. The loco is much, much more sprightly. CV6 here sets your median speed, so you'll find it's been set at a fairly modest value. What the decoder actually does is use the value set in CV2 for minimum speed, CV5 for maximum speed, and CV6 for the median speed to produce a smooth um, speed curve. So what I tend to do is set a value of CV6 of around a third to a half of the value of um, CV5, the maximum, and that will give a nice gradual speed acceleration. CV6 must be less than CV5, and it must be greater than CV2, otherwise you'll get some very odd effects. The last CV I'm going to look at is CV29, and in contrast to the other values that I've looked at, it works slightly differently. It actually works as a series of eight switches. So if we go into 29 and just read it, um, so normally we've been concentrating on this decimal value here. CV29 is really in using the bits here. and the first bit, if I turn it on, it will reverse the direction of the loco. You see that it adds 1 to the value here. The second bit, if I switch it off, it will put the loco onto 27 speed steps. Um, if it's on, it will put it on um, 28 and 128 speed steps. The third bit here um, will choose between whether the loco runs in only in digital operation, so when it's off. When it's on, it will work in digital and analog operation, so it will automatically recognise what voltage has been applied to it. The fourth switch here, so there, turns Railcom on and off, so when it's off there, um, Railcom is off. I'll turn Railcom back on again. The fifth one allows you to choose between um, the factory speed curve, so CV2, CV5 and CV6 are used, or if I turn bit 5 on, it will allow you to define your own speed curve using CVs 
I'd read the manual on that one. The last bit that Lent use is bit 6 and here that allows them to uh, use long addressing. So on CV1 you can only really fit two digit addresses in to the programming. Uh, long addressing actually splits the, um, the address across CV17 and 18 and to tell the decoder that it's using long addresses that bit 6 is turned on. Out of interest with converting bits to decimal values bit 1 has a value of 1, bit 2 has a value of 2, bit 3 has a value of 4, bit 4 has a value of 8, bit 5 has a value of 16, bit 6 has a value of 32, bit 7 64 and bit 8 128 and from all those bits you can make values up to a total of 255 so if we turn them all on and any quant combinations of these bits you can make any value between 1 or 0 and 255 as a final happy note there's nothing you can do in CV programming that will irretrievably damage the decoder so if things you find that things aren't working out very well on the LH100 handset you can go to reset on the programming track go in there and it will reset a whole load of CVs back to factory default the reset will work on any lens decoder um, I would consult the manuals of other decoders to see what the reset process is because often it's different when you've performed a reset you'll find that the local address has returned to 3 Because CV1, the short address can only handle two digit addressing, uh, Lens have built in a shortcut to allow you to use four digit addressing. So if we escape out, and then in the programming menu, you can go around to di DIR, direct, press enter. The first option normally comes up is ADR for address. You can scroll around, there are other things. These max speed is your CV5, starting voltage CV2. DCC is CV4, ACC is CV3. So into address, this is for long addressing, and you can put in the four digit address that you want and program it. And what it's doing in this case is telling CV29 that you're going to use long addressing and then splitting that long address between 17 and 18.